Hey, welcome back to my channel. Unless you've never been here. My name is Autumn and this is like my six month check-in. I've lived in London for six months now. It's just a joy. <laughs> I, you see, I'm glowing, I'm thriving, I'm happy. Life is still life. There's still ups and downs, but it's all worth it. Consider it all joy. First of all, this is from Fable and Eve. I know somebody's gonna ask. It's a sustainable pajama company in London. I wanted these pajamas a year ago and they were sold out all of 2021. I caught them during the holidays and they, they were all sold out except for my size. I said... <laughs> That's my God. <laughs> Isn't he good? He's so faithful. It's a fit. It's a complete fit. The pants have pockets. Y'all can't see. This is the Knightsbridge collection. Six months in London. Yeah. Whew. Wow. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Not me. And see the sun is coming out. And look at all this lighting. Look at all this. Just this good vibes. Good energy. I know that's right. So to show y'all how far I've come. And I also want this to kind of be like a little check in for myself. Because as I continue YouTube and continue to live in London. This will be cute to look back on. Six months ago. I moved to London September 1st, 2021, and it really was like the ultimate face crack. I was proud of myself for moving, obviously, and I was just happy to be here, but when I first moved in, y'all, it was a mess. It was a complete mess. Some people know the story, but I didn't have my lease finalized till the day I landed in London because of my guarantor being difficult. A, uh, Miss Housingham, that's a whole separate story. And B, because of my move-in date falling right after the summer bank holiday. The day they all came back into the office was the day before my move-in. They were worried I wouldn't have anywhere to go. And I was like, guys, it's good. And like part of me was worried, but I said, you know what? We've made it this far. It's gonna work out. So literally I did not see the finalized copy and everything signed and everything done until my plane touched down in Heathrow. I left the United States just stepping out in faith that everything would get finalized and nothing would go wrong and I officially had a place. But that wasn't true until I actually landed. And that's when I saw my lease and I was like, great. So I now have somewhere to go. <laughs> I would have been homeless otherwise. It was just me moving across the world on my Abraham shit, <laughs> moving into the, into the promised land. I had four suitcases and a duffel. Yeah, had to push all those bags through Heathrow by myself. It was such an ordeal, but we did it. <laughs> I was like <laughs> wielding all these carts, stuff was dropping, people were giving me looks and I'm like, sorry everybody. So I had a cute little taxi ride. My luggage matched my outfit. I'll have to post a picture. I was so happy to be back. I was so relieved even though I was exhausted. And then I get to the letting agent's office and they needed to see my proof of residence card, my B RP and I had to pick up the BRP across town. So literally after having done all that, I had to go get my BRP from like Farringdon. Fun fact, when you apply for a visa in the United Kingdom from abroad, they make you give a post office to where you want to pick up your stuff. And I didn't know where I wound up living. So I was like, oh, let's go with Farringdon because that's centrally located. Little did I know, <laughs> I would wind up living in West London. So I was like, oh, I gotta go to Farringdon. So I was on the tube, back like old times, you know? I get my car, then go back to Notting Hill. Mind you, my place is only a few blocks from the office, but they were doing construction. So then we had to get another cab. So I get to my place and I don't have keys. I'm thinking the keys are gonna be there waiting for me. And they were like, who are you? And I was like, uh, I'm moving into this flat today. Who are you? <laughs> Y'all see the sun again? Well, I tell this great story. So my testimony, so then I was waiting for keys and they were like, oh, well, we're not gonna give you keys until we have like proof of who you are. And so I'm like waiting for the leasing office to like call me and confirm with them and all this stuff. Mind you, I still have an American number and I had like paid for a British number through Skype. So it, the whole thing was a mess. My phone was like trying not to die. And I was like, please, <laughs> please hang with me, baby. <laughs> and then, then they were like, oh, well, we can't give you keys until they finish the inspection in the apartment. And so I was like, okay, but it's like three o'clock or I think it was like four o'clock at that point. And I was like, didn't the inspection start earlier? And they were like, yeah, we don't know what's taking so long. And then they were like, well, you know what? Forget it, let's just let you in. So then I come into my apartment and I couldn't even just like bask in the glory because they were just kikiing. They were just talking. I was like, are y'all going inspect? 
so I can, you know, move in. And they're like, oh, sorry, sorry. They had the whole inspection to do. And I was dragging them. I was like, what time did you get here? And so what exactly did you get done before I got here? Because they had already been in my flat for two hours and hadn't inspected anything. And I'm like, so what exactly were y'all doing? Because I would like to move in. I've had a long 24 hours. What's the hold up? And they're like, we're so sorry. I was like, yeah, I agree. I'm also sorry because I'm exhausted. I'm filthy, I'm nasty. And I just wanna sit down, eat Nando's and I don't wanna be bothered. And they're like, oh, is there anywhere you can go? And I'm like, no, <laughs> I just moved across the world, ma'am. Like there's nowhere else for me to go. I don't even have like, British money, like where would I be going? So I literally just stood there, like very Bernie Sanders, just, just watching them inspect. And they trying to like run through and do the studio in like less than an hour. And I'm like, thank you. That was the day I moved in. And we had a lot of shenanigans go down. And that first month I had to get a new mattress because the original mattress felt like a prison bed. It was literally hard as a rock. Had to, you know, get the bank account. Got rejected a few times, but we did it. Had to get the British phone number, all sorts of stuff. So it's just been the wildest six months. Got a job and I have two jobs. I remember when I had no jobs. So to have two, I'm like, I know that's right. Thought I would be a solicitor, then started law school and said LMAO, no, I'm gonna be a barrister. So currently waiting to hear back about pupillage applications. Gotten one rejection, but that's okay. I don't mind. <laughs> we still got a lot of other irons in the fire. It's all good. Pro bono, I've won both my cases. I never thought that would happen. I was so terrified in that training session. <laughs> I was like, Oh my God, how am I gonna defend anybody? Like I was like, me? But it all worked out. I always get super anxious right before a case hearing starts and then I pray and then it goes so smoothly. And then here we are, I've only won my cases. I know that won't always be true, but I feel special. I feel like that's divine confirmation. I can't even express how great it's been, how good it's been and how hard it's been but it's worth it. Never give up kids, always follow your dreams. <laughs> I'm trying to think, what else has happened in my life? Not only does everything happen for a reason, but when you're on the other side of things, you can see why it didn't work out the way it did before and like why it was for the best that it happened the way it did. The moment I got here and started spending all this money trying to get my place together and to get ready for school, I was so grateful that I had all that savings that really came in clutch because I was blowing through money like that. I was grateful and again that once I got over here that I didn't move until I did because not only was it so expensive but also London was finally out of lockdown at that point and seeing all that I had to go through to get established here I was like oh there's no way you could do something like this while everything's in lockdown. I also had the energy because it's very high energy to have to do law school, to be in a foreign country, to live on your own. Like a lot of it takes responsibility and consistency. And I think me spending a year in lockdown and just being in rest and not really having anything on my plate had a lot of pent up energy within me. So by the time it was time to go, I'm good. And it's funny because everybody's like, how do you do so much? And like, oh my God, you're so busy. You're so this, you're so that. And it's like, I'm just being faithful. I'm just being a good steward. Like, <laughs> it's not even, it's not even deep. Like, that's all it is for me. When I was at rock bottom, God and I had some very intense conversations. And I said, let your will be done. Whatever job you give me, I'm gonna be fantastic with it. However you choose to bless me, I will receive it. However much money you want me to work with, I got it. God said, period. So he just heaped all this on me and I'm like, yeah, let's go. Is it hard? Is it difficult at times? Absolutely, but is it still worth it? Of course, I see faithfulness all around me and that's that's what I came to say. I had to wait years to be here, I had to wait so long for it all to work out and I'm just like so content, so at peace and so happy. My hand is to the plow. You know, so many things I was worried about like a year ago and even six months ago, like, oh, will I make friends? Will I be happy? Will I find the right groove? Will it all come together? And it's like slowly but surely it's all coming together. At the six month mark, so much has already come together that I'm astounded. For a long time, London was the there. And so once London became here, I was like, well, now what? <laughs> what am I supposed to do with the rest of my life? <laughs> but um, we no longer have that issue because, you know, 
God is always speaking and you know, everything gets revealed to you in due time. And I feel like I'm just standing here. This was my Christmas present. I'm standing here in my Christmas present. I'm standing in my beautiful studio in Kensington. I had to fight to get this apartment. I had to fight to get these pajamas. <laughs> I had to fight to get good lighting to shoot for y'all, but here we are. I remember last March, I said, you know what? This time next year, I'll be living so good. Like SZA said, I was just like, I don't know how it's gonna look. I don't know how it's gonna happen, but this time next year, this year I'm gonna get my breakthrough. This year I'm entering the promised land. And I sure did. I sure did move to London in 2021. Truly blessed and highly favored. You know what I love about life? It's the fact that you're always in pursuit. Like you're always completing dreams, but also beginning new dreams. So it's funny to look back a year ago on the dreams that are complete and be like, wow, like I had so much hope, so much faith amidst everything going on and it did all come to pass. But now to stand here in the present, I'm like, oh wow, look at all that I care about now, all that I'm in pursuit of now that I wasn't even on my radar a year ago or six months ago. So I can't wait to see how life looks like September 2022 at the year mark and then the two year and the three year and all that. Baby, we're on the plight to citizenship. Don't forget. like. <laughs> Everybody's like, are you gonna stay? Like, are you gonna go back to the US? <laughs> like, do you like London? Or do you prefer Atlanta? And I'm like, bitch, this is home. Don't get it twisted. I'm solid. I'm good. Y'all don't have to worry about me. Like, <laughs> are you good? Everybody's like, you practice law here. And I'm like, absolutely, because that's what God said. Like, I'm not taking this degree and running, I'm taking this degree and pulling up. I'm not where I want to be, but I'm further than I was. Like, that, that's okay. It's okay to say that. And it's funny, you know, people look at my life now and it's like, oh, you have all this, you have all that. Like, it must have always been like that. And I tell y'all all the time, that's not true. That's just, this is just God's faithfulness. This is just how it looks at this present moment. It didn't look like this a year ago or two years ago or five years ago. And that's why I get excited because I'm like, I don't know what it'll look like six months from now or a year from now. God keep talking to me about marriage. And I'm like, sir, sir, <laughs> that's a whole different topic. That's a whole different video. But I'm just saying that looks crazy to me because I'm not even in a relationship. But you know what I mean? But God is so, he's so slick that I'm like, you know what? We make a good team because God loves to do the impossible. And I love to say yes. People are walking by and staring at me. I don't care. This is me living in my abundance and my inheritance so bloop can't wait to continue to film continue to document my journey i'm super excited is there anything else i can show y'all this is already a very long video oh can i just say can i just say my favorite pastime in london is not only going to the parks but y'all know I'm a book whore. I love books. And I love going to a different London bookshop every weekend or every other weekend. I try not to go every weekend because then I don't have money. That means I've gotten so many good books from so many great bookstores. And yeah, we've got All About Love. We finally got her. Rip Bell Hooks. When she died, all her books went out of stock in the UK. And I was like, I bet y'all not even black. <laughs> Like, y'all gonna sell out her inventory and you, you ain't even proud it like that? Like, okay, okay, sure, Jan. I got this one from the bookstore where Notting Hill, the rom-com was shot, so yes. So we have that and then, oh yeah. I got these from Daunt Books. Been meaning to go to Daunt Books for a long time and it's organized by place. So had to get Miss Joompa, had to expand my Joompa collection, but also got After You Gone because I, I really liked the bio and I was like, you know what? I should read more Scottish, British, and Welsh literature. So we have them and then, and then I have the, what's it called? Autobiography from Lady Hale. She's a very important judge in the UK, a serious trailblazer. She's like their Ruth Bader Ginsburg low key. But anyway, got this from Wildies, which is this like a law bookstore. There's a whole area called like Legal London, where all the chambers are, all the bookstores are, it's all in the same part of town. So yeah, I have legal bookstores repped in the home. Oh, but this one, ooh, 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 ooh. This one is from Lutyens and Rubinston. It's also in Notting Hill. This one, ah, oh, worn by Sophie Thanhauser. I'm hyped. Oh, I love books. But Hatchards is my favorite. I, I risk it all for Hatchards. I try not to go to Hatchards because I will spend too much money if I go. I don't mind Waterstones, but Hatchards. 
kids, she always, she was my baby four years ago and she still is to this day, aging like fine wine. Anyway, oh, and mm, guys, I haven't had a chance to use it, but we still have our slow burn candle by Casey Musgraves. Like, oh, mm, yes, it's the small things. And you know what else is funny? It reminded me looking at my pajamas and looking outside. For the longest time, my favorite flowers were daffodils. I've never seen daffodils really grow in the wild like that. But I remember my grandmother loved daffodils. And in hindsight, I think I only would really see them at her place. Now that it's spring, I've noticed that right outside my window, there are daffodils. And I'm like, wow. That's beauty, that's completion. Of all the times for me to ever see daffodils, for all the times for me to ever see that growth, it's here when you least expect it. And mind you, I don't really see flowers anywhere else on my street. It's specifically right outside my window. There are daffodils. And I'm like, okay, anyway, the video is actually over now. <laughs> because I have to get back to everything else. I'm very behind in school, that's okay. And I'm tired, but I don't care. Sorry that I messed up my filming and didn't post on time and skipped a week, but I'm, I'm good, I'm good. Y'all know I'm gonna have my little slip ups, but I'm still, I'm still rocking with you. I'm solid, I'm solid. <laughs> I've changed, okay? I'm cultivating consistency. And y'all saw, I was really about it for January and February. I had a little oopsie there, but I'm good. So anyway, thanks for watching this video. If you get it or you're about it and enjoying it, always subscribe, like, comment, share, and I will see you next week. So.